<laughs> hey, good morning, and welcome to the Florida Keys History Discovery Center. We're here for our uh, next edition of Discover History. I'm curator Brad Bertelli, and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Florida becoming a territory. Now, the, uh, the treaty that made that happen uh, was the Adams Onus Treaty uh, the, with, with Spain that brought the Florida territory to become an Ameri American possession. And with, and with the Florida territory itself, uh, there was also the inclusion of the Florida Keys and also the Florida Reef. And the Florida Reef was a, is a really was a really important aspect of this land deal, of, of, of this, uh, this property deal, for a number of reasons, and those reasons did, did not escape the American government. So prior to, and this, this happened in 1821, by the time it was, by the time the treaty was finalized, and because the American government realized what was happening, that they that they were going to acquire Florida and the and the Keys as, as well as the Florida Reef, they had begun to do studies about uh, the dangers of, of of the area, because the Florida Strait separated you know all the all the commerce coming from uh, from the Mississippi River through North through, through New Orleans, along the uh, you know up, uh, around Key West and up through the Florida Straits to to northern markets in in Chicago or in uh, in, in uh, Philadelphia and Boston and Charleston and um, New York, and there were dangers. There was the, the actual reef, which was a, a, a real danger, but there was also a piratical danger. And so uh, in 18, 1819, the government had, had, had looked, been looking into, into the dangers and into what was going on, and that was when uh, President Jackson, um, he instituted the West Indian Squadron which was the anti-piracy squadron that came down to uh, the West Indies to clear out the area of pirates, with Commodore James Biddle being the, the first person in charge of the, uh, of the squadron. He wasn't super effective and, um, and was shortly after being given command, would, uh, would, would relinquish his post, and this was given to Commodore David Porter, who is really the one who's recognized as being a part of the West Indian squadron and um, he's the one who went to Key West and, and set up uh, um, the Navy Depot down there and operated his anti-piracy squadron to clear the waters of pirates in the West Indies, which didn't take a long time. After a couple years, he had pretty much vanquished piracy in the West Indies, although not in the Florida Keys. A lot of people think that these pirates were in the Florida Keys. They really were not. They were largely Puerto Rican pirates and, and, Sp and Spanish pirates operating out of, out of Havana and Cuba, as well as those in Central and piracy in Central America. In fact, there is a great, a, a great map um, that was uh, that a local gentleman, Brian Schmidt, who, who is a collector, shared with me. That is a had a list of all the piratical um, attacks against American interests from 1818 to 1825, and of the 89 uh, attacks listed on, on this map, and some of them are quite brutal. Only one mentions the Florida Keys. And that wasn't really even the Florida, the island chain itself, but the waters off of the Florida Keys. But this anti-piracy squadron was not the only development and the only uh, action the government took uh, in regards to this Florida Reef becoming a new American acquisition. Now, what had been going on, you know, for for a great many years, for I don't want to say 100 years, but for a long time, was wrecking was still happening even before. Uh, America got involved with the property, with, with, with the territory, and these wreckers were were uh, English wreckers working out of Nassau, and then Spanish wreckers working out of out of Havana, and these wreckers would come, you know, uh, salvage ships that were wrecked on the Florida Reef, and then take their cargo back to their their, their respective home ports. Uh, Spanish wreckers going back to Cuba, and the English wreckers going back to Nassau, and the American government also realized. That uh, all this commerce, all, all this, all, all this money coming from these wrecked ships was going away from, away from uh, American ports. You know, American interests. So America was not was not benefiting from this new acquisition they had. So in 1823, and partly because of the recommendation of, of Porter, who recognized the rather loose laws that were governing the wrecking industry and, and what was going on along the Florida Reef, um, who recommended, you know. Porter recommended that something be done. And one of the primary things that happened 
with the, uh, in 1823, when these, this first wave of, of wrecking laws were established, one of the primary goals of this was to indicate and to, and to talk about, or, or, or to, to, uh, to, um, to uh, make laws that said any salvage, anything salvaged from an American property had to be taken to an American port of entry. So in, the, in those days, there were really three in the territory of Pensacola, which does not really you know, come into play when we're talking about the Florida Reef, but also um, St. Augustine and then Key West. So now wreckers were not able to, you know, to, and I'm sure some did, you know, stealing, you know, at, at night, there wasn't a lot of, you know, people governing the, the, the entirety of the reef. So there were still some Spanish wreckers, you know, taking cargo and taking, and going back to Havana, and some English wreckers, you know, taking uh, uh, salvaging ships and going back to Nassau. But the law indicated that anything taken from, salvaged from an American territory or American property, which was the Florida Reef, had to be taken to an American port of entry. And this is kind of when this big influx of Bahamians really went from, from uh, Bahamas, began to move to Key West because this was the new port, the, the, the new home of wrecking. And wrecking would go on to really um, uh, create a, a, a new commerce, a new business, a new, a new enterprise in, in the Florida Keys and in the territory, and it would go on to make Key West uh, one of the rich, richest cities per capita in the United States, and at one point more millionaires in Key West than anywhere else in, in, in Florida, certainly, and, and, and deburgeoning the U.S. Uh, at the time. But those were the two really primary things that happened once Florida became an American territory. They wanted to clear the area of pirates to make sure the, all these commerce ships that were leaving, uh, that were departing uh, New Orleans after all this, uh, all this commerce was coming down from the, from the north, down the Mississippi River and into New Orleans and then loaded on to, uh, to merchant ships and then trekked up uh, through the Florida Straits into you know, East Coast markets. They wanted to make sure that that, that was protected. So they hired, you know, they hired uh, first Biddle and then, and then Porter to take care of the pirate, the pirate part of it. So the waters became safer, but then there was still the Florida Reef itself, and they wanted to make sure that you know ships that were wrecking there, that all that cargo, all that money on, that was out on the reef was coming back to America, so they could, uh, you know, America first, so we could, you know, so they could, you know, claim the money and, and, and get what's, what was due. So that is our little history lesson for today. Uh, this is going to be our last, our last uh, Discover History session for the year. We'll be back after uh, in, in 2021, which is going to be an amazing year compared to <laughs> what we have just, or what we are almost finished going through. And so we look forward to, uh, to seeing everyone back. I uh, hope everybody has a safe and happy holidays. And uh, goodbye to you guys. We'll uh, I'll look forward to seeing you um, well, in two and a half, three weeks. So have a great, have a great week. Have a great safe holiday, and we'll see you back soon. Thanks so much.